The difference in uh, the new uh, personalised medicine trials is that for the first time we won't actually be uh, having the result of the trial applying to a large population, it'll only apply to a relatively small subgroup, so those entered into the trial have less of a chance of benefiting unless we target the treatment appropriately. But the real issue is as we divide a population up into increasingly small subsets, we run the risk of having underpowered trials if we try and do things the way we've done them with big randomised studies to sort out the efficacy and toxicity of new treatments. So what we're going to have to do is whole new paradigm, probably N of 1 studies, proof of principle studies if you will, a small study to look at efficacy and toxicity and then uh, the interrogation of large digital databases to fine-tune uh, results that we would have otherwise done in separate randomised trials. And if we don't do that, uh, we run the risk of doing trials that will never get the answers that, uh, that we want from them. Genetic counselling um, is, is interesting because uh, we're not only dealing with the person involved in the counselling, the information and the implications of that information apply to their relatives as well. Uh, and so it's far broader. And, and so issues uh, that are conventional about privacy of the individual simply may not be able to be applied here. The other issue with genetic counselling is that we're giving patients information about probabilities of future events. And that will in introduce uh, uncertainty and possibly a distressing uncertainty, but they need the information to be able to make informed decisions about their future. But it's quite different from other medicine, which is working towards a, a certain outcome, we're actually introducing what could be quite a distressing uncertainty. Big data is all about hyper-connectability of data, bringing in data sets from many different places and joining them together. And it's actually about data linkage. And for linking data, you need it to be identified while you link it and then de-identified when it's analysed and you report the results. And the problem is always whether there can be either re-identification or whether there can be a problem in the linkage set of keeping the data identified. So is the patient's privacy going to be respected? But then we have the problem as, as the data set fans out, it's not clear always whether it will be used by others for the purpose for which the person who donated their data intended. And, and it's very difficult to know um, whether they can give broad enough consent to be able to keep on interrogating the, the, the big database as time goes on. Tissue banks are problematic ethically because they involve uh, taking some tissue and linking that with clinical data sets. So you need identification of the data to allow the linkage and then uh, when you're reporting on the, the vast um, biobank, it should be de-identified so a patient's information can't be linked to them. Uh, and people worry about the privacy of, of that uh, process. So that issue has to be resolved. But the bigger issue is probably that uh, over time we're going to need to uh, use uh, that tissue perhaps for investigations that weren't initially envisaged as technology and information change. And can a patient give sufficiently broad consent to allow that to happen? Uh, what happens if uh, the original donor is a child? Do they have to re-consent? What happens if you can't re-contact a patient? Are you allowed to still use that tissue sample and its information? 
And uh, the custodian of a data bank, if in fact you can identify the custodian and uh, uh, that may also have implications for commercialisation, if they discover something that would be important to the well-being of a single individual who donated to that data bank, uh, do they have a responsibility to report back? And I think all of these things need to be sorted out in a governance process prior to setting up the data bank. Genomic policy really has to be about privacy. Uh, genomic data is, is so powerful that re-identifying an individual uh, could be quite problematic for them. So the protection of their individual data in a large database is important. But I guess the, the other issue that would worry people is the possibility that their genomic data could be used to discriminate against them. For example, in being able to be insured, medical insurance, travel insurance, or uh, even their employment prospects in particular high-risk um, employment chances that they may have. And we don't want to see that the sort of discrimination, certainly if we've got some of the population uh, having genomic tests and others without, uh, and there'd be a difference between those two. So we need to actually protect people against their, their data being misused in that way. Mm -hmm.